Okay, today's lesson is Unit 6, Lesson 2, and we are covering rational functions um, and looking at the long-run behavior. What we did in our last lesson was a short-run behavior, and we were looking at what happens at specific points in the middle of our function, and now we're worried about what's happening in the long run. Or you can also think of this as the end what's happening on the ends of our graph. What happens if we're going that way or we're going that way? So to start off with, pause right here and then copy down these charts because you're going to get more out of it um, if you, uh, the point of it was to go put it in your calculator, but you're going to do better off if you um, make sure you have the right numbers, get those numbers in there and then start back up and we'll go over the question. Okay, so hopefully you have copied those down. Um, completed the table of values. So what we were looking at, as I said, as the values for x approach negative infinity. Okay? So this time we're looking at our x values as they get really large. And like I said in the last lesson, we, these numbers were actually over here and they were getting really, really large. So we're looking, alright, the first one says as x approaches negative infinity because these numbers, negative 1, all that are going towards negative infinity. And what are these numbers getting closer and closer to? And I hope you were able to see that they're getting closer and closer to zero. These are decimals, really small decimals, and that just happens to be on the negative side of zero if you want to have that here. Okay, really, really close. Then, when we look at this next chart, okay, we're looking at what's happening in our graph as we go towards positive infinity. So again, what is happening to the graph as our x values get really, really large, and we see that our y values, again, are getting closer and closer to zero. Okay, so what they asked us to do next is look at the graphing calculator. So I've put it in two places. The first one, I'm putting this function, uh, f of x equals 1 over x plus 4, and we put it into our inspire and it looks like that. So they also wanted us to do it by changing the viewing window and making our x go between negative 500 and 500 and our y going between negative um, 10 and 10. So I did that also with Desmos and this is what it looks like. And the bell rings. No. So what they're asking us after we graph it, they want us to look at this and explain how the graph of this function supports our answers from parts A and B. So if I go back to this, let me come up just a little bit so we still have our function. How does the graph support the answers? Well, I hope that you can tell what we just said is that our graph, it looks like the equation y equals 0, except, okay, if I go back down and you look at it, okay, so this looks like y equals 0, except we have a little slip in the middle of it. So we're just going to write that, except there's a skip in the middle. Okay, so find the x and y intercepts. So how do we find the x intercept? x intercept means that y is equal to 0, which is the same thing as our numerator equals 0. What's my numerator? 1. Okay, so if I set 1 equal to 0, that of course is not possible. So I do not have any x-intercept, okay? And how do I find a y-intercept? Is I set x equal to 0, and if I put 0 in for x, then I'm going to find out 0 for x is going to give me 1 fourth. So this is my y-intercept. Oh, that was really bad. Sorry. Let me try that one more time. Now, um, it's always good to go back and look at that graph. So if we pull up our graph here that we had, um, it does not ever cross the x-axis, but it does look like it crosses the y-axis at 0, 1 fourth. So we're in good shape now. Okay, on to the second problem. Again, just to speed it along, and I don't have that other graph, but we'll come back and answer the question. So, it asks you to complete the table of values. So, pause for a second. Copy those answers down. So you're back up and you have those numbers down and so we'll go ahead and look, answer this question. As the values of x approach negative infinity, okay, so again my x values are going to negative infinity, 
what are my what is f of x approaching and again pause and think and I hope you already answered that that is 2 so f of x is getting closer and closer to 2 so let's look at it on the right side complete this table so again pause it you want to copy down those values okay and you have the values copied down so now as the values of x approaches positive infinity these numbers x is going to positive infinity what is f of x approaching and again I hope you can see that those numbers are getting closer and closer to 2 okay so now it says graph y equals f of x on a graphing calculator using the viewing window from x equal negative 500 to 500 and y negative 10 to 10. So again, to start off with, I want to go look at that um, on our Inspire. So if you put it in at first, this is what it would look like. And then if we look at it on our Desmos and we changed it so that I had negative 500 to 500, then I hope you can see it looks like what? it looks like what is that equal to this is one and that's two so it says explain how the graph of function supports your answers so I hope you're already thinking to yourself that it looks like y equals two but again there's a space in the middle Alright, so um, now the next part says divide the numerator by the denominator and rewrite the function as a sum. Okay, this was our function. It was, I believe it was 2x plus 9 over x plus 4. That's what we had. That was our f of x. And they want us to divide. So you're going to be doing a lot of division on here, so I want to make sure that you know how to do that. So I'm going to remind you, excuse me, that when you divide top to bottom, if you think about just knocking this guy over, that's what goes underneath when you do your division. So I'm going to have x plus 4 divided into 2x plus 9. So in our division, what I multiply x by to get 2x, I hope you answered 2. And then we multiply 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 4 is 8. So we divided, we multiplied, now we subtract. Those are our steps along division. 2x minus 2x is cancels. 9 minus 8 gives me 1. So when I rewrite that as a sum, I hope you remember that this right here, okay, um, let me write up here in case y'all don't remember, but this is our quotient and this is our remainder we've talked about this before in previous lessons so when I write this as a sum I'm gonna say f of x equals the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor so that's how we write that and I do want you to point out if you haven't noticed already okay um, or just keep this in mind. So whatever we have for our quotient is going right here. And whatever we have for our, let's try this one, remainder is going right here. Okay? Um, and some of my students have already figured out that this quotient, what we get for that quotient, is always what we're getting for that asymptote. So that's something to keep in mind as we go forward. I'll show you in the next problem. Okay, the last thing to do for this, find the x and y intercepts. Again, if it's the x-intercept, then that means y equals 0, which is your numerator. Okay, and um, so what's my numerator? 2x plus 9. So I have 2x plus 9 equals 0, 2x equals negative 9, and x equals negative 9 halves. That's what x equals, but to write the intercept, we say x is negative 9 halves, and y, of course, is 0. So that's one intercept. And the other intercept is going to be um, y-intercept means I want x equals 0. So when I plug in x, I get 9 on the top and 4 on the bottom. So x equals 9 over, no, 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 no. That's plugging in 0 for x. Plugged in 0 for x, and so y equals 9 over 4. 
So I'm going to go back and look and see if that matches on our graph. So we had an x-intercept of negative 9 halves. Negative 9 halves is like 4 and a half. So that's negative 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. So that one checks out. And the other one was 0, 9 fourths, which is just over 2. So 1, 2, and a fourth. And that one worked out also. Okay, so that was building up to how are we finding these end behavior asymptotes. So now you're going to actually go through the mechanics of doing it. Okay, now, so I'm going to do the first example for you so you know what you're supposed to be doing. I don't want that color because I want it to match. Um, let's go with this. So you're going to, okay, as I said, people kind of already figured out that whatever that quotient was we got right here, this quotient turned out to be our end behavior asymptote. Okay, but in each problem, you're going to rewrite the function as a sum. <clears throat> Use that sum to help you find your end behavior asymptote. Check your answer by graphing the function and the asymptote using a graphing calculator in the giving viewing window. So let's go do part A on problem number three. Let's see if I can keep that up there. Okay, so part A says rewrite the function as a sum. So remember, I'm going to topple that guy over x squared minus 6. Plugging that into 4x squared. What I multiply x squared by to get to 4x squared, I multiply it by 4. Okay, and I like to line up my terms, so I'm going to put that on top of the constant term, so I just added 0. 4 times x squared is 4x squared. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. So then when I subtract, okay, 4x squared minus 4x squared, of course, is 0. 0 minus a negative 24 is a positive 24. So how did I write that sum? Okay, remember it was equal to the quotient, and my quotient is 4 plus my remainder. And you all all know the remainder over the divisor. So this, that's not supposed to be, that's supposed to be just minus negative. Okay, <clears throat> so quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. And then you need to go tell me what is your end behavior asymptote. And my end behavior asymptote is, it's going to be y equals whatever your quotient. So it's y equals 4 in this problem. Okay, so the next one that we have to do is to go find, part B says find the domain for the function. Okay, so remember our domain, we got to figure out that that denominator, denominator, where is it equal to 0? So I'm going to take my denominator, which is x squared minus 6, and I'm going to set it equal to 0. And that gives me x squared equals 6. And so we're going to take the square root of both sides. And I get that x equals plus or minus the square root of 6. Now, to help you make sure you write that domain, I strongly recommend that you draw a number line because people get confused about where the numbers are. We have negative infinity over here, positive over here, and graph those two points. Well, negative square root of 6 is here, positive square root of 6 is here. And these are the numbers that cannot be in our domain. So, when you're thinking about this, okay, I have how many pieces? I have one piece here, two pieces here, and the third piece there. So I have three pieces on my number line, which means when I write my answer, I'm going to have three parts. So my first part goes from negative infinity to the negative square root of 6, union, negative square root of 6 plus the square root of 6, union, square root of 6 to infinity. And there we have the three parts. Okay, part C, last one. Find the x and y intercepts. So remember, how do we find the x intercept? x intercept means y equals 0, or that numerator equals 0. So what's my numerator? It's 4x squared. Set it equal to 0. Divide both sides by 4. x squared equals 0. Take the square root of that, and I get 0. So when y is 0, then x is 0. So I'm going to have the point 0, 0. Now, you always want to check the other one. Let's go check this. So to find the y-intercept, okay, that's where we're plugging in 0 for x. So what does y equal if I plug in 0 for x? 
well I have 0 over 0 minus 6 which is the same thing but you'll need to check both because sometimes you will have um, you have more and you can have more than one x-intercept but you can have more than one y-intercept so if you get it there you're good and that is also your y-intercept so <clears throat> excuse me what you're going to finish is the last page of your handout and that has problems four through seven on it but you're going to go through that same process each time make sure you don't forget to put that eba on each of them so please email me if you have any questions or come see me thank you have a great day